And some of those players will get some uh, opportunities this afternoon on this warm, humid afternoon here in the swamp. It is indeed that, my friend. <laughs> well, the Toledo Rockets have never played a Southeastern Conference team. They will open up 2013 playing not only Florida, but next week they take on Missouri. Austin Harder to kick it off. Florida won the toss. They defer, so the Rockets will have the football first. And that'll sail into the end zone, and that will be a touchback. And the Rockets will obviously bring it out to the 20-yard line. And that'll give us a chance to talk about a guy who I think is as talented as, as anybody in terms of quarterbacking a team in the MAC, and that is Terrence Owens, 6'4", 210 pounds, a senior, a left-hander that can do a lot of different things for you. Yeah, he threw for over 2,700 yards last year, 14 touchdown passes. He also ran for five TDs, so he is a dual-threat guy who has started a lot of games, been starting games since his freshman year now he's a senior he is not afraid Dave of this atmosphere here in the swamp Toledo won nine games last year expected to compete for a MAC championship in 2013 a little shoulder fake throw to the near side pass is caught Dwight Macon makes the first reception of the year for the Rockets and that'll be good enough to move the chain. To you, you see the senior leadership from Owens right away. I mean, not afraid. Knife's one in the zone coverage, reading things out. That's a lot of experience at quarterback. The Rockets offense predicated on tempo. Little dump to Fluell, and he can't hang on to it. Almost looked as though Fluellen was trying to run before the ball got to him. Fluellen last year had a stretch of six straight 100 yard games in that combination of successful outings. He had a couple of 200 yard performances as well. Here's Fluellen. He is tripped up might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 10. Dominic Easley in the middle of that D-line. You look at our impact, impact players, Andre. Yeah, David Fluell, and we talked about him over 1,400 yards. Bernard Reedy, when they go to the air, look for him to make some plays. Dante Flower, a guy off the edge that can flat out get to the passer. And coming back from double ACL surgery, the no number one overall recruit in the country when he came out of high school, Ronald Powell. We'll have more on him as this game unfolds. Three-man look from the Gators on a third down and ten. Here comes Reedy in motion across the formation. Owens dropped for a loss. Well, and I tell you what, easily came to eat today. The big fella in the middle. He spent his first two years at defensive tackle. Last year, they moved him out to defensive end, but they moved him back inside this year with the emergence of some young players. He's the guy that actually causes the sack. Doesn't come up with the sack himself, but the pressure by number two forces the sack on Terrence Owens. Easily had four sacks a year ago, eight and a half tackles behind the line of scrimmage, trying to build on that performance. The senior out of Staten Island, New York. So the Rockets will punt it away. Marcus Roberson to return. Number five in blue will watch it hit at the 16 and roll out of bounds. Good kick from Brent Penza, 47-yarder. So we'll have our first chance to look at this Gator offense, an offense that averaged 26 points a game last year. That was 76th in the country. The man who will be in charge of leading this group, Jeff Driscoll, once again, the junior, 6'4", 235. Yeah, and you look at the 1,600 yards, Dave. I think they just kind of handled him with kid gloves and didn't really want him to make a lot of mistakes. They had an excellent defense a year ago, but it's a different year now. Now a junior, a full season under his belt as the starter. He will be relied upon a lot more this season so expect those numbers all of them to go up this season so no Matt Jones out with a viral infection should be ready to go next week against Miami for the Gators that means Matt Brown will get the start the junior out of Lithonia Georgia will get the first handoff he's working the left side and he'll take it out to the 20 yard line give him four hard earned yards and that's where you the 
concern comes from if you're Toledo up front. Because Florida, even though John Alapio, the right guard, out of this one, as well as Chaz Green out with a shoulder injury, their right tackle, they are still big up front, and they have some experience. Tyler Moore, the right tackle, started some games at Nebraska before transferring here to Florida. Second down and six. Brown out to the 25 yard line. He'll be close to the first down, maybe a half yard shy. Chaz Whitaker comes up from a safety spot to make a play. Take a look at our impact players on this side of the ball. And Trent Voss and Junior Sylvester, a couple of guys trying to replace some big holes defensively. Yeah, a couple of linebackers. They're trying to replace Danny Moles, who had 166 tackles a year ago. Mac Brown, we saw already getting involved in this one. And then certainly Trey Burton, as we mentioned in the open, he is the guy when they go to the air that provides the consistency for Jeff Driscoll. The third down and short, and Florida will line up in the I formation. Matt Brown still the tailback. He'll get the handoff. Breaks a tackle, picks up the first down to the 30, give him five on that carry. Ross Madison, strong safety up to make the hit. I'll tell you what, if you're Florida, this is right according to schedule. Running the football on first and second down. And you're doing it with being physical. This is what Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator, wants. Physical downhill running by Mac Brown. And they felt like once he got his chance, and he's going to have some opportunities this year that he was going to produce. Kind of been waiting in the wings, and now it's his turn. So first down and 10. Driscoll will take it to the 34 yard line. There's Will Muschamp now in his third season as the Florida head coach 18 and 8 overall disappointment in the bowl game last year the only real big heartache for this team after a great run throughout the regular season to finish 11 and 1 did it with defense yeah he's saying uh, which is what he's known for but he has done a nice job of building this program where it's going to be a consistent winner from year to year. Little five receiver look empty set now for Jeff Driscoll on second down and six. Driscoll over the middle. Pass is caught. There's Trey Burton. That'll be a first down at midfield, 17 yards. Oh, a nice job with the eyes by Jeff Driscoll, moving zone coverage and then waiting for Burton to come into the window. Watch him here, this nice in route, kind of sets it up. Nice flat break, and then show that number eight to your quarterback. All right, let's see the eyes move the defense right knowing you're going to come back left to Burton. Well, that's how it's done right there. Burton had 18 catches a year ago, rushed it 29 times for 190 yards. There's Matt Brown off the right side. Maybe a yard on the play. Chaz Whitaker, Chase Murdoch come up to make the play. This is a Toledo defense that they gave up 28 and a half points a game last year and that's that's a lot of points yeah. but they've made strides as a matter of fact it was the lowest points allowed in a half a dozen years in Toledo. Yeah a lot of points to give up I think the difference is turnover margin they, they were plus seven last year on the season you're going to win a lot of games and they were able to win nine last season because of that turnover margin forcing teams to turn the football over lost eight starters off that rocket defense from a year ago including Dan Moles led the country in tackles and Robert Bell who had 100 stops this pass caught on the near side Quentin Dunbar spins out of some trouble picks up a first down they'll spot it inside the 35 give him 15 yards on that pickup and Chris Dukes finally pushes him out of bounds. Boy you got to be impressed with Driscoll working inside to Burton and then right back outside quick hitch and then right there get back outside away from the traffic ball away from the defense as well so it can't come out and he's kind of the leader of a young group of receivers now a, a junior out of Booker T Washington excellent high school program we rely on him a lot. Boy, this is the perfect drive for Brent Pease, the offensive coordinator. Taking some time off the clock, giving your defense an opportunity to catch their breath in this heat, and you're moving the chains. And they'll move them again. Down to the 10 goes Brown. He has stood up there, dropped at the 11. 
23 yards for Mac Brown. Well, a nice block by Max Garcia starting at left guard to open up a nice big hole. Watch the hole along the left side. Watch the big fella right there in the middle. Watch him go to work. And just open up the... Boy, Mac Brown now five carries, 38 yards. Boy, this, this is a bad way if you're Toledo to have it come at you when they're running the football efficiently. Trey Burton takes the snap. He works the left side. He'll take it down to the five, the six-yard line, give him a gain of five. When you, the best way to describe Trey Burton, he's just a football player. He can play anywhere on the football field. Receiver, we saw him catch a pass already. Running the football there, they'll use him on speed sweeps, the screen game. He is just a complete offensive weapon. 6'2", 225 pounds, can fit anywhere. Tenth play of this drive coming up. It is second and six. Oh, work it out of the eye, and Valdez showers in at tailback, number 10. Driscoll looking to throw. Hit showers at the five, trying to get to the end zone. Knocked out of bounds at the one by Chris Dukes. And there is Valdez Showers, who just a few weeks ago was playing in the secondary. But because of injuries, they move him over to running back, and they think they have uh, found something in number 10. You're watching right here. I'll flank the defense. Freeze it right there. You see the opening out here? That's where you want to lead the football if you're Jeff Driscoll. Away from the defense, your first color, which happens to be Valdez Showers, and you give it to him out in front with a chance to continue running and get to the pylon. Valdez, the sophomore out of Madison Heights, Michigan, was an outstanding running back in high school. He'll take a breather. First and goal. Here's Mac Brown. Touchdown, Florida. A methodical drive down the field for Florida. A little bit of everything. So the Gators trying to make it 7 0. Here is Austin Harden to attempt the point after. The redshirt freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia, will split the uprights. That is a nice opening drive for the 2003 2013 season. 11 plays, 84 yards. Gators up a touchdown. Florida leads at 7 to nothing. 6.46 to go in the opening quarter. A solid 6-minute, 21-second drive for Jeff Driscoll and company. Let's go back to that touchdown. Yeah, watch the fullback, Gideon Ajibe right here, as well as the tight end, Clay Burton. Watch those two blocks. Burton takes his guy down inside. The fullback's going to kick out, and that provides the running lane for Mac Brown to basically walk into the end zone untouched. That's excellent work. Mac Brown was pretty solid on that drive. Uh, Mac Brown finished that drive. Six carries, 39 yards. Jeff Driscoll there, Dave. Perfect in the air. Three of three, 37 yards. A couple of big passes, moving the ball inside as well as outside. That keeps the defense off balance. So Austin Harden kicks it off for the second time this afternoon. This one will sail down to Bernard Reedy, who is an explosive return man. Speaking of explosive, Keanu Neal steps up, the true freshman from right here in the Sunshine State makes the special teams hit. Well, make sure you join us at halftime as we announce that week's winner of the Honda Generators Tailgate Giveaway. Each week, we'll be awarding a brand new Honda EU 2000i generator to the fan with the best tailgate. Simply send us video or pictures showing how you tailgate for your chance to win. Log on to ESPNEvents.com for more details on how to enter. For the Rockets, we'll try to answer. Owens under center. Flew well and off the left side. Give him three, maybe four when it's all said and done. And 
He's just a big, tough, physical runner. He's going to have his work cut out for him because you look at it, Leon Orr, Dominic Easley, Flower, who we talked about, Powell, the linebacker, they'll move him down in the box a lot today. He makes it tough to run on that front seven. Throw to the near side, incomplete. Looking for Justin Olak. A little bit low. Yeah, and that's the one thing if you're Toledo. You have to stay on schedule. And now you find yourself in third and long. Perfect play on first down. You pick up three. And then you want some additional yards. Get yourself to third down and medium or less against this Florida defense. Not allowing them to pin their ears back in an obvious passing situation and come after Owens. Third down and seven. Last year, Toledo, 42% on third down conversions. That was fifth in the MAC. Three man rush. They'll sit back and make the play defensively after a four yard pickup. Fluellen hit by Darren Kitchens, the senior outside backer. Yeah, that's on Fluellen, the senior back. He, he motions out and nobody covers him up. There's a nice window there. Just get yourself to the first down marker. When you're tackled, you at least have the first down. All you got to do is turn up the field. But he, he runs the route short, which allows Florida to just come right up and tackle him. Good look at Matt Campbell, the head coach of Toledo in his second year as the head man. Former offensive coordinator for the Rockets, promoted to the job. Line drive kick. That'll be fielded by Roberson on a hop to the 35. He goes. A 48 yard punt. We'll step aside. 5.03 to go in the opening quarter. Gators with the football up a touchdown. Florida's opening drive, Andre, went 11 plays. Yeah, Jeff Driscoll did a nice job moving the ball inside, in route here to Trey Burden, outside as well to Quentin Dunbar. Now you got Toledo off balance. The running game as well produced some big, big plays by Mac Brown. And they top it off right here with a touchdown run. Nice blocking by Trey Burton on the edge to get help get Mac Brown in the end. But you talk about keeping them off balance, three passes, and a lot of it's just domination by the offensive line of Florida. And you wonder if panic's gonna set in now. Hot, humid, and those big guys leaning on you defensively. Toledo's gotta have something happen in a positive way during this drive. Driscoll throw near side. Here's Valdez Showers. Brent Pease told us yesterday, the offensive coordinator for Florida in our meetings with him, he says, you know, I, I've looked up, I've, I've got 68 plays on the board, and Valdez Showers is in the formation on 24 of those. <laughs> not bad for a guy who just came over to your club on that side of the ball a couple of weeks ago. Just moved over, but he's not shot of offense. I mean, he was a 2,000-yard rusher his senior year in high school at Madison High School in Detroit, Michigan. Ran for 29 touchdowns as well, so he knows what to do with the football. Not new to that area. Going to play that same role the Gator fans might remember that Amar Amarius Hines used to play. Kind of a hybrid. Here's Mac Brown. He'll take it out over the 40 to the 42 yard line. Give him three. Trent Voss, a sophomore linebacker, steps up to make a play for the Rockets. It doesn't seem like a big game, but they're right on schedule. Third down and short, third and three. Very manageable situation, especially the way Florida has been running the football. It's going to pound away. I'd go right back to Mac Brown if I'm uh, Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator. Today's first and 10 line brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Six defensive backs, the dime package in for the Rockets on a third down and three. High snap, whistles. I think some movement on that Gator side of the football. Now you're off schedule. Before the play, false start. Offense, number 64. Five yard penalty remains third down. Kyle Coney, the big right guard. He's a big experienced player who's Played in 27 games during his career. Three starts. Threw a lot of football. A senior now, his fifth year, fifth year senior at right guard. 
He's moved into that guard spot since Jalapio is out with the torn pectoral. Jalapio had started 27 straight games at guard. He's the best guy up front for them. Here's Driscoll. Dumps it off. The pass caught for six yards by Showers, but well shy of the first down. And I tell you what, a Toledo win during that drive. Mention the fact that they had to have something positive happen. Well, Coney jumps. That makes it third down and eight. They miss a sack there on Driscoll, but they hold Florida and force them to punt the football. That's big because you don't want this game to get away from you early. Al Christie returns to punt for Florida averaged almost 46 yards a kick last year which was a Florida record. This one will bounce out of bounds. They'll spot it at the 22 yard line. That's where the Rockets will have it when we come back. Seven nothing Florida. Gators lead at 7 0 in the first quarter on a hot, muggy, swampy like day. For more on that, let's go down to Kara. Guys, it's hard to prepare for sweltering heat like this, but the teams are doing their best on the Gators side. A lot of players, especially linemen, hooking up during breaks to the cooling vest, which won water around their core. And then on the Toledo side, trainer John Walters told me they just found this device that actually cools your core by sticking your palm into a giant cooled off glove. And they are using those with a commitment on the Toledo side. Well, maybe they can bring some of those up here. They got any extras. First down and 10 for the Rockets. They have one first down in their two drives. That ball nearly picked off. I'll tell you what, you got to have a he heads up. Alonzo Russell, he's open, and Owens wanted to go to him on the quick slant. Always, always, you tell receivers if you're the quarterback, you think you're getting the ball every time I drop back to throw it. Don't go out and run a, a route half speed. Owens, two out of five, 18 yards. Now you're looking at second down and 10. Over the middle, pass incomplete. Now two of six, but he's had some drops. He should have hit Flew Allen, who dropped the ball early. Russell should have caught the first down pass, and then there, Macon puts one on the ground. That, that makes it tough to move the football offensively when you are, every time you look up, you're in third down and 10, third and eight. Playing against a fast defense like this. Owens career 64 percent completion percentage matter of fact two years ago completed passes at a clip of 72 percent and the Rockets gonna have to take a timeout just not third down and ten Hey, Florida fans, get your tickets now to one of the premier men's college basketball doubleheaders, the Jimmy V Classic. The 19th annual event features your preseason top 10 Florida Gators taking on the 13th ranked Memphis Tigers. Book your trip to New York City and cheer on the Gators. For tickets and information, visit JimmyVClassic.com or call 866-858-0008 today. That's a good one. Florida, Memphis, good venue, good college basketball. What, the Gators making some noise here in the swamp. Didn't know what kind of crowd to expect today with the warm weather. Good football coach right there, Matt Campbell. On his second year as the offensive coordinator before becoming the head coach. Understands the program. Owens trying to set up a screen, but there was nobody there. The only person there was Zach Karen, his 
all Max center. Pressure came from Ronald Powell. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to set it to David Flewellen, who went way inside. The blocks were set outside, and it looked as though Owens was looking outside for Flewellen, and all he saw was the backside of his offensive lineman. Did the smart thing, though. Don't take the sack and risk having the ball come out. Throw it away and punt the football. Sometimes that's the best play in a series. Just punt it away. This will be the third punt for Vince Penza. Roberson back to return. It's a line drive kick returnable for Roberson. Dancing around and takes it to the 40 yard line. So decent field position coming up for the Gators after a 45 yard punt. Well, we'd like to recognize our friends at Allstate for their charitable contributions across the country. Since 2005, Allstate has donated more than $3 million through the Good Hands Field Goal Net Program to benefit University General Scholarship Funds. You know, Bowling Green came in here last year, Andre, to open up the season. Another MAC team. And Gave them problems. 14-14 midway through late in the third quarter. The Gators ended up scoring the final 13 points of that game, but certainly uncomfortable and I think they learn from that and you have so many suspensions and with all the uh, the uh, injuries that they have they certainly learn from that that's why they came out running the football doing what they do best Mac Brown will take it to the 44 yard line give him four on that carry tripped up by Robert Zimmerman the defensive tackle you don't think Will Muschamp drove that home this week Oof. you know remember Bowling Green took him lightly all of a sudden we found out we, we were in a football game and it was getting late they went on to win the game but it was a little bit more difficult than they wanted Bowling Green pretty good football team have a chance yeah. to win the Mac this year they look good in their opener Trey Burton slides out to a slot and a four receiver look Driscoll will throw Here's showers he's into Toledo territory and that'll be good enough for a first down give him eight Trent Voss and Cameron Cole combine on that tackle as Valdez showers getting a good workout today here in the opening quarter you got some guys who just recruit they're just athletes you can put them anywhere Trey Burton's one of those guys I think Kyle did showers is the same way he actually said that playing running back is easier than playing defense where he moved over from and he is certainly a playmaker they're going to lean on back around off the right side Pick up a couple of yards on the play. Mac, the junior, 5'11, 215. A little bit smaller than Matt Jones, who will be in the backfield next week. Jones goes 6'2, 225, although he did lose about 15 pounds with that viral infection. Yeah. They're similar, though, in their running styles. Both physical guys that come downhill. You saw there is no wasted movement. He is straight downhill and into the offensive line, engaging defenders. Not afraid to uh, put his pads on a defender. So Florida very deliberate offensively here in the first quarter. Their first drive went six minutes and 21 seconds and produced a touchdown. Driscoll takes it down to the 40. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Give him a gain of about six or seven. And there's a fine line. You know, you want to keep him healthy, but you don't want to discourage him from pulling the ball down and, and running. A second on the team and rushing a year, I mean, last year. Driscoll perfect on the day, throwing the football. Gators lead it by a touchdown. That is the end of quarter number one. Back in Gainesville, Florida at the Swamp. SEC football, the 10th ranked team in America. The Gators lead Toledo 7 0. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, Kara Capuano. Glad you could join us as we open up our season. Next week, we're off to Knoxville to check on Butch Jones and his volunteers. Bobby Petrino and the Hilltoppers will be in town for that one. Jeff Driscoll and this Florida offense. Very methodical today. Driscoll has been perfect throwing the football. He went six of six and he's mixing it up. He looks sharp. He missed eight days of camp, but you won't you won't be able to tell by the way he's playing today. Yeah, had an appendectomy right right before camp started. Here's showers, a lot of room to run. Valdez turns the corner. 
He's down to the 10-yard line and run out of bounds by Danny Larkins. 29 yards for the sophomore out of Michigan. And that's how they're going to use him, to work the edges. Saw him catch a quick hitch on the outside. And here, a little misdirection, fake the fullback inside with a back flip. And he, you see the speed there. That's what they like about showers, the ability to get the corner with that speed. So they were telling us this first day when he came over to play offense, he ran a little pass route, and he made some unbelievable catch, and everybody's like, I think we might have found something. <laughs> no, he's, he's, not, he's no stranger to offense. Here's Burton now, that Wildcat. He'll work the left side, stays on his feet, and ends up losing a couple of yards back to the 15, a loss of four for the Gators. Good tackle there by Ross Madison. Goes right through Trey Burton. He's kind of the quarterback of the secondary. Moved to DB on arriving at Toledo. Was a wide receiver, quarterback. Quarterback. I'm sorry, quarterback in high school. So now the Gators looking at second down and 13. To the wide side. Pass is caught. Quentin Dunbar wrestled down at the seven. Cameron Cole comes up to make the play, but a gain of seven. First down markers right at the one yard line. Yeah, and that's where you're going to take your medicine this year with Jeff Driscoll. If you don't have pass rush and you decide to play zone coverage, he has developed into a guy that not only, you know, he's not. Just watching the coverage is how Brent Peace described it. He's he's reading coverage. He's seeing things open up and seeing the drops of defenders. So now this year, as he's matured, he knows exactly where to go with the football versus zone coverage, which is why he's seven to seven. Time out on the field. We'll take it as well. Gators looking to make it 14 to nothing. Toledo will have something to say about that when we come back. He's looking for looking for a place again to play. Well, for the Gators, it's third down and six from the seven-yard line. Driscoll lobs it up in the corner. Pass is caught, but out of bounds. Nice grab by Dunbar, but needed a couple of more feet to work with. Now it's fourth down and six. Yeah, needed to get there just a little bit earlier. The football needed to be out. And Dunbar, as you're seeing, if you're seeing him come open on the corner route. It's got to be already in the air because of the limitations of field position. You're a little bit closer in. Out in, the, out in the field a little bit. That may have been been OK. Well, Austin Harden, the freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia, from the Marist School, will get his first chance at a field goal. The redshirt freshman replacing Caleb Sturgis, who was just dynamite in his career. This will be a 24-yarder. And that will split the upright. So a good start to the career of Austin Hart. The Gators lead it 10 to nothing. 12.59 to go here in the second quarter. Well, game day in the SEC, and it starts here. Eric Rett, former running back here, the school's all-time leading rusher, over 4,000 yards, has taken the place of Mr. Tubitz today. Now, Mr. Tubitz still around. Just to, They're going to do something different here at Florida throughout the years to come. They're going to have a, I don't want to say maybe a celebrity Mr. Tubitz before the game. And today was Eric Rett, and you will not find a better Gator alum than Eric Rett. I mean, this guy played the NFL for seven seasons. Always worked hard, but he looked like he was about to blow a knee. <laughs> I think he was excited to be back, and I'm, I'm sure they were equally as excited to have him be a part of the pregame uh, festivities today. He even wore the Mr. Two Bits outfit and everything. It was great. It's good stuff. Here's Bernard Reedy. Trying to find a little bit of room to run. Boy, he worked hard to pick up. The yardage out to the 27-yard line. Give him a 23-yard return. Valdez Showers on that special teams tackle. Boy, we have said Valdez Showers' name a lot today. Excellent return, though, by Barreti to set up Toledo and maybe their, their best field position. they got to have something happen offensively here, though. I mean, they are very much in this ball game. 12:50 left in the second quarter. Florida only have scored, only scoring 10 points, and 
Those are the first three drives for Toledo. Only 19 yards of total offense. One yard rushing so far in this ball game for the Rockets. Toledo's had the football four minutes. Florida's had it for 13 minutes. Here is Flewellen off the right side. He'll take it out over the 30 to the 32. Yeah, they're not helping Terrence Owens when you do this. You got to catch the football right here. Be alert for it. There's some tough catches because coverage is good, but you got to help him out. Ball pops out, but late as Owens is dropped by Leon Orr, a junior nose tackle out of Newport Ritchie, Florida. Gets it on the action. And then on the flip side, you got Florida chewing up time. 147 yards of total offense and averaging about seven yards of play. That is tough. Look, this is a Toledo offense that scored 32 points a game. They're capable of blowing things wide open. They averaged 450 yards of offense a game last year. Some movement on the right side. Did Powell force the movement of Toledo up front? Yeah, I think that's accurate. See, I think it's Taylor. Offside on the defense. Number seven, the five-yard penalty, third down. It was Ronald Powell. The guy coming back from double ACL surgery and mentioned earlier he was ESPN's overall number one recruit in the nation out of high school. Missed all of last year. Said it was the most difficult thing he's ever had to go through. Not necessarily the rehab, but not being a part of the football team on a daily basis. Coaches really love how he's matured through the injuries and just has a greater appreciation for the game and it, it rubs off on the other players as well. He had six sacks back in 2011. Toledo. Toledo will take the timeout. Matt Campbell knows this is a big down because this defense is going to have to come back on the field and they have been out on the field most of the afternoon on a hot muggy afternoon here at the Swamp. Well, the most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home, folks. It's the SEC Network. It launches in August of 2014. For more information on how to get the SEC Network, go to, this is really simple, GetSECNetwork.com. There you go. There will be three football games every Saturday on the new SEC Network coming your way in less than a year. Exciting times for the Southeastern Conference and ESPN. They combined forces 24-7. Best conference in the country. You can't get enough of it. And so it, there'll be plenty of stuff. <laughs> there will be wall to wall. So let's see what Toledo has in store here. Third down and 12. David Flewellen is actually in as the quarterback in the Wildcat formation. On a third and two, did he get it? I think he did. And this is what you turn the film on and then when they go short yardage, this is what they like to do rather than have Owens under center and take it back to Fluella. And they lined him up in the shotgun and allow him to come downhill. Boy, he I don't think he got a generous spot. It's it is close. They're going to bring the change in. I think he's going to be just short. You know, initially, the push, I thought he had it, but then once they spotted the football, it moved back about half a yard. What do you do if you're Matt Campbell? I think you have to punt it away if you're short. And he is short by about six, eight inches. That is a non generous spot right there. Well, he's getting his offense together. He may be going for it here. Uh, they've got an all-conference center in Zach Karen, who many feel like, you know, is one of the best at his position. 6'5", 300 pounds, a Remington Award candidate. He's up for the Lombardi Award as well. I just get Owens, who's 6'4", and get behind Karen and try to push and get a first down. Yeah. Well, he needs about half a yard. Matt Campbell going to roll the dice in Florida territory, third and inches. Llewellyn 
in shotgun. Lose football. They tried a little he didn't quick get it. snap. And I never understand why coaches try to trick their way into, into stuff like this. Where did the ball wind up? Did the I ball think, bounce I think it's forward? still short. It actually moved back. They call for another measurement, but I don't understand it. Guy hadn't taken a snap all day. It's the most important snap in the ball game. And you have somebody that's not used to taking a snap go take one and puts it on the ground. Zach Rosenbauer came in, the fullback, just kind of, he was on the edge, came in motion, stopped behind Karen in the center. Short. That's just a bad call. And you see here, you get a fullback coming in trying to take a snap right there. The push up front, it's already enough for the big center, Karen, to, to try to hold off easily. And he just blows him up. Now you got a fullback trying to take a snap, and he puts it on the ground. No way are you picking up the first down. Well, now you set up the Gators. An excellent field position at the 36-yard line. Driscoll will go under center. Mac Brown, your tailback. <laughs> Lose football. It's on the ground. Toledo has it. The Rockets come up with the turnover. Well, Cheatham Norrells, as the guy came off the edge, Gets to Driscoll, forces the fumble, and then is able to recover it. Now, I'm thinking if you're Driscoll, you're going up top after a short yardage stop. There's the play action, but nobody picks him up, and that's where Mac Brown, he misses that block because he goes back inside instead of picking up the edge, edge rusher. And that allows for the fumble and the recovery, and if I'm Toledo, I'm trying to go up top right now. Well, they need some offense. They need something positive to happen offensively. It has been a complete struggle. 14 plays, 23 yards for the Rockets. Here comes Reedy in motion. They'll fake it to Fluellen. They'll swing it out to him. Gets a big block, makes a man miss. There's a big play. The Rockets definitely need it. Down to the 30-yard line, inside the 30 to the 28. A 28-yard pickup. Well, a nice block on the edge by Dwight Macon. On Marion Ball right here. Nice job with the eyes, surveying coverage. And then here, do something with it afterwards. Quick snap. Owens overthrows Alonzo Russell. That's kind of hard to do. He's six foot four. <laughs> he was an all-Mac 13 player last year. 56 receptions for just under a thousand yards and five touchdowns to find a way to get that type of weapon to football a little bit more. Oh, but I like this drive so far for Toledo. Now they're being aggressive. A slot receiver right here. You're going to get some pressure and go to the slot receiver. Fluellen is swallowed up. Kareem Hunt, excuse me, on that carry. His first carry of the day. Hey, what, this Gators front four. You know, they, they lost so much defensively. They lost some super talented players on that back end. Sharif Floor, Matt Elam, John Bostic. Well, a I defense that was one of the best in America, but they don't look like they've missed much. Uh, I thought Matt Elam was one of the, the better players in the country last year on the back end. Owens throws it high again. Yeah, he's just got to get settled in. When you can't hit hitch routes, 
I mean, I know they're across the field, but you have to be able to complete those. He had Russell on one on the left side of the formation, and then he goes right. You've got to be able to hit those, and that's exactly what Matt Campbell's telling you. If you hit that, that's a gimme. Every quarterback in the country playing college football has got to be able to hit hitch routes. You get coverage that's soft, that's a gimme six, six yards if you just catch it. 45-yard attempt. Jeremiah Detmer from the middle of the field. He's got plenty of leg, and he splits the uprights. Well, that's 18 in a row dating back to last year. Led the nation in field goals last year. He is now 30 out of 36 in his career, and he puts the Rockets on the board. Toledo pulls within a touchdown. It's a 10-3 game down in the swamp. It's the Mac of the SEC. Good look at the swamp. 10 3 ball game. Florida out in front by a touchdown. Gators had a great opening drive. So almost six and a half minutes, 11 plays. Since then, it hadn't been as uh, efficient, if you will. But your thoughts about Florida offensively right now through a quarter and change? Yeah, I've been very impressed with them. Other than the turnover by Driscoll, the fumble, and then the, the Toledo recovery, they've been able to do what they wanted to do run the football, be powerful with Mac Brown, spread the ball around. Driscoll's only thrown one incomplete pass in the ball game. So they've been able to do what they wanted to do the surprise here in the first half that is 10 three right that they haven't been able to score a little bit more with all that uh, production that they've had and yeah, they've owned the football in terms of time of possession but have only managed 10 points and you know I think you and I were talking during the break there it's that this is Florida's offense they're just going to grind you out I mean it's not going to be a lot of flash they're going to be time consuming move the chains good special teams work by the Rockets Patton takes that over the 15 to the 17 yard line. Silvestri with a nice special teams tackle. The junior linebacker, his first name happens to be Junior. You mentioned earlier the turnover margin for Toledo last year, plus seven. They force a fumble of Jeff Driscoll on that last drive, and actually points come out of it, and they're able to put up a field goal and cut, cut into this Florida lead. Florida lost a fumble as you said but they were plus 15 last year in the turnover margin That'll they win were you a seventh, lot of games too <laughs> seventh in the country so out of the shotgun on a first down and 10 swing it to the wide side here's Trey Burton he'll have the first down big collision at the 30 give him 13 yards Chaz Whitaker comes up to make the play for the Rockets Sean Wilcher on the outside. Watch number six. You cannot go inside. You are the edge player. You're the leverage. You keep everything inside out. When you, you, you basically block yourself. When you take that step inside, now it's easy for Burton to get outside and up the sideline. Wide open at the 35 yard line is Patton. Makes a couple of guys miss and falls forward into rocket territory. That's a 21 yard pickup. Boy, was he wide open. Yeah, coaches love his speed. Not a big guy, but at 5'9, 171 pounds, he can really motor. Watch him here. Guy in the slot. Just keep your eyes right there on Patton. Right here. Slide inside, then back out. That's a nice target to give to Driscoll. Causes the flow of the defense to go inside once he starts down inside, puts that foot in the ground and slides back out, and it's an easy throw for number six. Nine out of ten, 96 yards. You wonder when they're going to go a little vertical. We talked about that in our meetings yesterday. There's the inside handoff to Mac Brown. He'll take it inside the 45-yard line. That's a keep me honest run. Junior Silvestri yeah, leading I've, the charge. I, that's a good point by you. I, I think the way he's throwing the football. He's playing with a lot of confidence. Even after that fumble, he comes right back out, bang, to Pat. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now, and so you can set him up. You got zone coverage where you can attack the seams of a, of a single high safety and just allow him to read him out. Safety takes a step one way or the other. You just throw opposite. Two tight ends set on second down. Two receivers to the near side. Mac Brown in a tailback. They'll work the right side. 
Not much happening there. A gain of a yard, maybe two. Jazz Whitaker comes up to make the play as well. Big down here for Toledo. You want to stop Florida and get this football back going into, into halftime. There's Joker Phillips, former Kentucky head coach, now the wide receiver coach here at Florida. He has been uh, also the recruiting coordinator down here, and he has uh, been active on Twitter. It's easy to keep up with Joker. Say he's one of my favorite yeah. human beings I've ever met. It's a good man. Mark Herndon in it running back. He stands to the right of Mr. Driscoll in the backfield. He'll stay in the block. Driscoll hits his man, Amon Fullwood, one of those talented true freshmen. Fullwood out of Jacksonville, Florida. We're expected to see Demarcus Robinson. Fullwood at 6'5. He plays a lot smaller than his size. That allows you to. Get him the football in and out of breaks and I like how he ran the route he was about a yard short of the first down but it's he's moving and man coverage and it's cleared out you can just put one on him and at that size is the minute he turns up he'll fall for the first down. Joker Phillips has to enjoy going to work knowing he's got those youngsters to deal with the next few years. Here's Driscoll on a quarterback run. Mm, Why? Wow. He gets slammed to the turf by Orion Jones, the sophomore out of Tulsa, 285. Today's first and ten line brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. And the reason why I say why, you got Mac Brown running well, showers on the outside. Hernan has checked into the game at times. If you have to run Driscoll, you run it. I don't think you just run him. If, if things aren't working, that's when you run. Driscoll will keep it. Driscoll trying to fall forward for the first down. I think he'll have it. That'll be close to a 10-yard pickup tripped up by Trent Voss. Remember Driscoll. I mean, I think sometimes you over it gets overshadowed. He's 6'4", 235 pounds. Yeah, big guy, rushed for 413 yards last year. But the reason why I say that, there isn't much behind him. Tyler Murphy, who took all the snaps in the eight days that Driscoll was out, he's about as, that's the body, ex, the extent of the experience behind him. Driscoll's the team's leading returning rusher. Cuts it inside, still on his feet inside the 20 now. Give him seven, maybe eight hard-earned yards for Mac Brown. See, that's where my running game would come from right there. Just downhill with Mac Brown. Let him prove he can't carry it 20, 25 times a game. Nice block by Kyle Coney, right guard kicking out, and then a nice second effort there by Mac, Mac Brown. Mac Brown had 25 carries all of last year. He has a dozen today for 59 yards and a touchdown. Well, look at that, just under five yards a carry. Brown only 40 career carries coming into this game. Boy, Brown getting walked a couple of times, but picks up the first down on second and short. Hard earned four yards. You know, let's face it, Matt Jones will be the be the main tailback. I yeah. mean, the way he finished the year last year, the spring game, everything about Matt Jones fits this offense. But I think what Mac Brown is doing right now is giving himself an opportunity to get more carries, even though it will be a Matt Jones show. Well, it, it proves to the coaches that you can rely on Mac Brown and get, give Matt Jones a, a breather at times during the during the a football game. So you want two backs throughout the season, and I think Mac Brown's going to be able to provide that for Florida. Tenth play of this drive. It's a handoff to Brown. Brown to the five. He's down to the two. He may have just got in. They're going to give him six. 14-yard pickup for Mac Brown. His second rushing touchdown of the afternoon. Boy, excellent blocking up front by the offensive line. Kyle Coney in particular. The right guard. Watch, watch the right guard, 64, right there. Just keep an eye on him. Pulls around. Nice block right there. That's the seal block that opens up the hole for Mac Brown to just kind of slither through. And then it was just determination to get in the end zone after that. 
Harden's point after. Up and good. Andre, another outstanding drive by the Gators. Mac Brown feeling it, though, on this hot, humid day. Mac Brown with two rushing touchdowns. Another lengthy drive for the Gators, and they've stretched their lead to 17 to 3. Problems in Aggieland right now. See if Mac Brown can hold up. He looked like he is uh, fighting the heat here at the swamp. That kick taken back at the 10 yard line from Rodney Adams. Adams breaks the tackle. Adams out to the 36 yard line, but a flag comes in back at the 20 yard line. Nullifying a good return by Adams. Boy, this Toledo offense is going to need to stay on the field a little bit. They've return, return. Block in the back. On the return team, number two. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of foul. First down. That heat is beginning to weigh in on both these teams. For more on that, let's go down to Kara. Hopefully she's handling the heat better than most. Doing my best, Dave. <laughs> One player who is a little overheated after all of his work on that Gators drive, Mac Brown. The training staff has been working with him, helping him catch his breath, get hydrated. They hooked him up to the cooling vest. I'll tell you, the first person over here to check on his health was fellow running back Matt Jones, and linebacker Ronald Powell has been his biggest fan. Just told him, it's your game, man. Keep moving him. It's going to take a little more of the heat to get Mac, get him out of the football game. Mac Brown, this is his opportunity to really shine, and he has grabbed a hold of it. Ooh, may have been a false start up front. Was well, Zach Karen, one of the best centers in the country. He's got his hands full with two good ones, though, and Damian Jacobs, Leon Orr, as well as Dominic Easley. It was Orr that jumped. Actually, Jacobs that got flagged for it. It's a lot of man right there out of junior college. Chose Florida over Tennessee. He came out of the spring as a starter, and then Orr just beat him out in fall camp. Owens dumps it off over the middle. Justin Olak drops it. What's a third or fourth time today? A rocket receiver hasn't been able to hold on to the football. That's one I thought Owens may have been a little bit better keeping the football. Plenty of green grass in front of him. Just pull it down and make a play with your legs. He is an excellent runner when he has the football in his hands. Second down and five. Florida showing blitz. Little dump off. That'll be a first down. Flewellen to the 25-yard line. Give him 11 on the play. When you see flashes of why Flewellen had the type of season he had last year, you get it to him in the open field. The first guy usually misses. He shows some power at 215 pounds. Owens, oh, strong arms it near side passes, incomplete. Alonzo Russell was the intended target. Jalen Watkins on the coverage. Luchez Purifoy once again, a, a guy with tons of potential on everybody's award watch list, suspended for this game. He and four other of his teammates out for this one. We knew about Antonio Morrison, an outstanding middle linebacker. He's going to miss this game, but late last night, Will Muschamp puts the hammer down on four other Gators, including Purifoy. Purifoy projected first-round pick. I know Kuiper loves his ability. Flew well and big hole off the left side. Still on his feet. Breaks another tackle. He's, he, he's into Gator territory after a 27-yard pickup. Marcus May finally brings him down. The redshirt freshman safety. Well, you watch him on film. You love his body type. He runs with power. Gets downhill. And watch him right here. No wasted movement. And I mentioned earlier, the first guy usually misses. And it's Co Brian Cox Jr. who missed him initially. Here's Reedy near side. He's popped out of bounds inside the 40 at the 38. 
That'll be another eight yard pickup. And Dave, this is when Toledo's good. When they can dictate tempo and it's positive yards, you know, they're coming downhill at you in a fast way on a hot afternoon. They're going to be right in this game if they're able to get themselves into the end zone here with about two minutes left. Exactly the point I made earlier with a young corner and Wilcher on the other side. You can't allow or give up outside contain because then Reedy gets down the sideline. Watkins does an excellent job of playing from outside in and then making the tackle. Fought through a block to make that tackle. There's a flag on that play. And Leffler, our referee, will give us the diagnosis here in a moment. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, number one, after 15 yards carry from the end of the run, it goes to third down. Well, I didn't see what he did, but he obviously got up and did something right in front of that Gator bench. Some of the coaches are even, like, pointing, throw him out. I don't, so let's take a look and see what happened here. Right here, just nice outside leverage. I don't know. I don't know what. Well, Reedy had his helmet ripped yeah. off, and then he looked like he gave a little forearm shiver right to Watkins. Boys being boys. Pass caught over the middle by Russell, and he's to midfield and stopped there. Gain of only four, and the line to make is back at the Gator 37. Let's kind of watch the, he, maybe Reed's thinking the, it should have been blown dead or it's over, and any. He, you just can't do that. You can't lose your cool, you hurt your football team. You got Florida's entire staff working the officials, and finally they throw a flag, but can't lose your cool like that. You're a senior. Have some momentum. Yep. That up. just kills the momentum right there. Matt Campbell's a young coach, second youngest coach. A guy that uh, is very serious, but yet has that uh, softer side. One day after practice, actually rolled in with an ice cream chuck for his guys. Figured they'd earn a little ice cream. Likes to keep it light. On the periphery, but when they get in that on that practice field, he is all business. He is intense, and, and uh, he is all business. Good young football coach. Came from a winning program himself at Mount Union, where he played in three national championship games. Ends it back to punt again. Wobbly kick that will hit and bounce inside the 10, and it will be down at the seven yard line, a 43 yard punt. Well, a reminder next week, some more SEC football as we will head to Knoxville, Tennessee, as Bobby Petrino and Butch Jones square off with the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Come a calling on the Volunteers. That'll be at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Western Kentucky, Tennessee, next Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. What a job Butch Jones has done. I, I say this about yeah. Tennessee. I don't think it's a quick fix situation there. I don't. I mean, he's still playing with some of the same guys he had a year ago, but I think the future is unlimited for what he's been doing. And you have to, his 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 major overhaul is getting everybody that's there to buy into what he wants to do. And some some kids will resist it, others will buy in, but Butch Jones is a good football coach and he's won everywhere he's gone. I think he'll win at Tennessee as well. The ESPN Recruiting Nation has them as the third best recruiting class to this point. There's Mac Brown out to the 15-yard line, a gain of eight. Florida right in the top 10 as well. Alabama leading the way in terms of 
early verbal commits. He's well, got to be passionate about recruiting. The foundation of every program, and Butch is certainly that. You just don't understand how you, you're down so long at Tennessee. Forty five seconds to go before halftime. Here is Mac Brown. He'll pick up the first down. Coming up on the C Spire halftime report. Rice leading Texas A&M in College Station. Number one Alabama to open the night against Virginia Tech. Can't you just see that? You know, the LSU TCU get good good football game there. They'll preview that one. But Johnny football comes in in the second half of the Rice game and the legend grows. <laughs> That's a different dynamic when he comes in now. Things change. And this will probably be the final play of the first half. A half that Florida offensively dominated in terms of plays. They ran 35 plays for 237 yards. Toledo ran 25 plays for 100 yards. Time of possession, 19 minutes and 11 seconds for Florida. 9.31 for the Rockets. Mac Brown was a good story carrying the football. Nine, uh, 16 carries and 90, 17 carries and 98 yards. That is a big time first half for Mr. Brown. And the Gators lead it 17 to three. Kara catches up with the Gator head coach, Will Muschamp. Coach, heading into the locker room, what are the primary focal points that you want to see improve in this second half? Well, we need to continue to play the game we're playing. On offense, we've drove the ball every drive, except when we jump off sides on third and two, put ourselves behind in the sticks, and they caught us on the corner pressure, and they knocked the ball off of us. Defensively, we've given up two plays. Offensively, you sound a little bit frustrated with with the mishaps there. Why? Well, I just uh, we just we can't shoot ourselves in the foot, and that's what we've done. But we just need to keep doing what we're doing. We're fine. Thanks, Coach. Dave. All right. Thank you very much, Kara. Will Muschamp takes a 17 to three lead here at halftime. Gators, the 10th ranked team in the country. Some substantial scoring drives, and they lead Toledo 17 to three here on a warm, muggy afternoon in Gainesville, Florida. Moments away from third quarter football. Dave Neal back alongside Andre Ware, and Andre, I think everybody expected this Florida defense to be as good as they were, or close to as good as they were a year ago with the talent they have. All the questions focused on this offense. Your thoughts on the first 30 minutes of football in the Gator? I, I think uh, Florida was outstanding, with the exception of the one fumble, the one turnover they had in the first half. They controlled the line of scrimmage. They been able to just kind of pound their way down the field methodically. Mac Brown finishing drives, and I thought Jeff Driscoll was consistent in the passing game. The difference in this one, third downs. Toledo yet to convert on third down. You mentioned Mac Brown filling in for the sick Matt Jones, and speaking of sick, I think Mac Brown was sick today using today's vernacular. Yeah, sick in a good way. I mean, he, he just came in like an experienced back. It was his time to kind of seize the moment, ran between the tackles, got outside when he needed to, and then Jeff Driscoll, just a model of consistency, and it started from the very first pass he threw inside. He goes outside. He's mixed it up when he had to drill it. He's drilled it on the move. He's made plays. I mean, I, th I think he has just been outstanding this first half, and he is off to a good 2013 football season. I mean, 10 of 11 throwing the football is pretty good stuff. Mac Brown almost 100 yards in the first half on 17 carries, had 25 carries all of last year. You know, we talk about Mac Brown filling in for Matt Jones. I think we also saw a good look at Valdez Showers, who's going to be a factor offensively as well. The Gators will have the football first here after the touchback. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Jeff Driscoll and company back on the field. And, you know, we, we talked, we, you briefly hit on it earlier with Jeff Driscoll missing some time early, right before camp started. Had an appendectomy, missed a couple of weeks of camp. Came back, first day of practice, there were 
in the routine running their one minute offense. Right. And they're going full throttle. And Coach Muschamp says, you ready to do this? Jeff says, yeah, give me the football. Six passes down the field, they score a <laughs> touchdown. So, yeah, it's because of his experience in the offense when you can come back to a foundation. And Brent Peace now in his second year as the offensive coordinator, there's some familiarity there for Jeff Driscoll to come back to some carryover from a year ago. And that, that, that allows him to hit the ground running. Here's the handoff to Brown out over the 30 to the 31. Time to get an update from Kara, who visited with Matt Campbell. Settle in and finish the details. That was the message in the Toledo locker room at halftime. Head coach Matt Campbell told me he knows his team is young, and this is an intimidating environment to play in. But they've seen it, they've done it for a half, and he is confident they're ready to settle in and fight this second half. And Kara, along those lines, they're going to really have to gut it out defensively. They were on the football field for 20 minutes. The defense was in the first half. 20, 29, almost 20 and a half minutes. So that half, that, that counts too. By the way, give Mac Brown a 100 yard game after that last carry, up over 100 yards. It's a yard or two on that play. And that's exactly what Toledo's going to have to do. That last play right there. Tackle in bunches and a bunch of guys getting to the football is in space. It's been it's been a long tough road trying to bring down or stop Mac Brown. So third down and let's call it three. Gators in the first half three out of five on third down conversions. I'll tell you what that's where Toledo got shot. Yeah. And the foot was 0 for 6 in third down conversions. in motion three receivers bunched up to the near side and Driscoll working that way and that pass is dropped by Burton would have been shy the first down anyway needed to get to the 35 yard line Jazz Whitaker in on that coverage and the Gators will have to punt it away it appears and good defensive stand by the Rockets yeah right out of the locker room you need to have something positive happen you force Florida into a three and out you get the football back and, and you need points right away just from a momentum standpoint you have to have something positive happen offensively and they'll get some decent field position here. We'll also see how this Toledo defense plays in the second half because remember they lost eight starters from a year ago a lot of different guys on the football field playing significant snaps. Bernard Reedy with a fair catch, 37-yard punt, and the Rockets will have it at the 32-yard line, their first possession of the second half. David Flewellen showed some signs of greatness in the first half, but just not enough. If you're a Rocket fan, he had three catches for 42 yards, five runs for 36 yards. Yeah, I think they've got to get him the football. We saw what he was able to do, the three receptions for 42. He gets the ball out in space, but you got to allow a guy like that. The more touches he gets down the stretch, the better he gets. That's the kind of back he is, and we need to get him involved. Owens in the first half throwing the football. Seven out of 16 for 68 yards. Gain of two and a half, maybe three. Neron Ball, a junior out of Jackson, Georgia. Boy, Ball's a great story. A couple of years ago, Neron got diagnosed with a very severe vascular, hereditary vascular condition and had to have emergency surgery. I mean, he was close to dying. Missed all of 2011, came back and played some last year. I mean, it's amazing that he's even on the football field. It's a great story. And good job of fighting back to get himself back on the field. Owens going up top. Coverage on the far side by Roberson and Alonzo Russell. There are no flags. Toledo coaches are begging for it, and there it is. Boy, that was late. He'll be stuck in that back pocket. I thought it was pass interference. Reedy has an, a right to the football, and he was cut off. Pass interference on the defense, number five. The 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. I'm still waiting, Dave. We get all these rule changes every year. I'm still waiting for that one to become a spot foul. You see right here the, the right hand of Roberson. 
just preventing Reedy to get up the field. If you don't extend that hand and you're just running shoulder pad to shoulder pad, then you're okay. But once that hand comes out after five yards and you're preventing a receiver from getting down the field, they're going to flag you for that one. The reason that flag was late was stuck in the belt. <laughs> he was trying to get it out. So a fresh set of downs now for the Rockets at midfield. Quick throw back near side. Dwight Macon. He's inside the 40 down to the 37 yard line. A 14 yard pickup. Cody Riggs comes in to throw him to the turf. Yeah, this is what they do. I mean, they are a quick tempo team that's right up and in your face. And with the exception of the penalty, they had it rolling. Then the penalty on Reedy just kind of stalled their last drive. Pass caught on the near side by Macon again. He's inside the 25 down to the 24. That's 13 more yards for the Rockets. Yeah, and you get Pure, Purefoy out of the game, and Watkins is in, who's played a solid game, but they haven't really challenged those corners of Florida. Now, their the reputation is they, they've got them just down the line. A lot of depth there, but I'd see if I'd make them play and prove it. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. Jump ball in the corner. Looking for the six foot four Russell. Roberson on that coverage. Yeah, it's going to be an offsides here on Florida. So Owens did the smart thing. Offsides on the defense. Number 44. Five yard penalty. First down. And just try to allow a big guy like Russell to make a play at 6 4. Just throw it up and hope, knowing that you already have the offsides penalty in your back pocket. Like this Toledo drive here to start the second half, Dave. Well, they waste no time. Back at the line of scrimmage. On a first and five, a lot of options here. Flewellen, he's to the 10, down to the eight yard line. An 11 yard pickup, move the chains again. It'll be first and goal for the Rockets. I'll tell you what, the more physical team right now seems to be Toledo. Coming right downhill is Flewellen. And not shy about doing it. Owens. He'll lose a couple of yards. And that, that play there, you're playing right into the hands of a fast Florida defense. We're not going to get the edges against them. The success they've had running the ball is right downhill. And I know that there's Dominic Easley sitting in there, Jacobs, Orr, all those big guys, but Llewellyn's had the success coming downhill. Second and goal. Ball sits outside the 10 after that two-yard loss. I like this matchup at the top. Here's Reedy. He's going to have to make some blue jerseys miss, and that just didn't happen. Maybe a yard on the play. Cody Riggs, the first one there, and then Brian Poole, the sophomore, comes in. The former five star defensive back out of high school, considered the number two cornerback. And Corey Jones, the receiver. This is a block, and that that would that allowed for a quick tackle. You got to have the blocks on the edge to kind of free up those receivers of Toledo. And when you miss one block, it's a free shot on the receiver. Third and goal. Well, this may be a free play. They'll dump it off, and Flewellen is leveled at the 13-yard line. Michael Taylor may have been. number 51 on the defense. five-yard penalty. Third down. Throw that baby into the end zone. We'll see the offsides right in the middle of the formation. Watch 51 right here. There it is. And you got an experienced center, and Karen, who's going to snap it every time. And now it's third and goal from the five.
Maybe a smash route at the top, a corner route here with an underneath. A lot of room in the corner and a big receiver. Owens. He's blitzed, throws it away. Boy, pressure came at him right out of the gates. They were trying to get Russell to the corner. You just got to get there fast. It's a condensed area of the field, and you don't, you got to know that your quarterback won't have much time to read it out or allow you to shake defenders at the line of scrimmage. Get into him, get into your route, because the blitz is coming. It's a guarantee. So Detmer from 23 yards out. He will hit his second field goal of the afternoon. And it's now 19 straight for the right-footed kicker from Toledo. 17-6 our score here at the Swamp. All right, thank you guys. Time now for a look at an SEC grade. We saw Kevin Carter. This is brought to you by Regents Bank, and yeah, look at big KC. 91 to 94, first team All-American for the Gators. Went on to play in the National Football League. Man, still looks like he can play. Yeah. Had a chance to catch up with Kevin. Actually covered him when he was in high school, at Lincoln High School in Tallahassee, Florida. That's going back some time. to the 30-yard line. Fans, be sure to look for the region's tent next Saturday at the Sam Houston State at Texas A&M game to meet SEC great R.C. Slocum. Test your skills at our football throw and pose with the SEC championship trophy, courtesy of Regents Official Bank of the SEC. So Florida on their first possession. Had to punt it away. Went three and out. See what they do here on their second possession of this half. Valdez showers. Now comes in motion to the near side. Quick hitter to the outside. That pass is batted at the line of scrimmage. Allen Covington, the sophomore from just down the road in Tampa, Florida, with a big play defensively. And Andre, we talked a little bit about it. One of the things Brent Pease, the offensive coordinator, discussed with us is vertical passing game. Florida didn't really want to go that route, didn't really go there much last year. They lose Andre DeBose, who was going to be that deep threat for them. He's out with an ACL injury. Is this a team that can go deep? I, I think so. Quentin Dunbar certainly can get deep. And the two freshmen, Robinson as well as uh, as Fullwood, they, they, they are both deep threats. They run left side, get nothing on it. It'll be third down and 10. They may have to go vertical here. Yeah, I think you can, you can do it as well with Trey Burton in certain situations when you line him up in the slot. There are plenty of options. You've just got to be committed to doing it. And I think the offensive line today, for the most part, they've given Jeff Driscoll time to look down the field. So there hasn't been much pressure on him. Gators finished 114th in the country in passing yards last year. 146 yards a game. Today, Driscoll throwing the football is 10 out of 13, 101 yards. They go underneath. Burton makes a man miss, hurdles out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it? They're going to spot it right at the 40. He needed to get to the 41. And right on cue. They find him, and, and this guy knows what to do with the football. I think he is going to have an excellent NFL career because he can do so much. There's a motto, the more you can do, but he can do it all. Play special teams, receiver, you can line him up at, at running back. Gators will punt it away on fourth and one. You know what it reminds me of? Maybe not quite as fast, but a guy who's multidimensional is Randall Cobb, who's now with the Packers. Yeah, that's a good, that, that's a good comparison. Guess who coached Randall Cobb at Kentucky? Joe. Joker Phillips. Joker Phillips. Who's down on the Gator sidelines now as their wide receiver recruiting coordinator. That oh, ball, nice bounce. Yeah, that'll be down inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. That'll wind up being a 53 yard punt. 17 6 our score. Toledo started to move the football. There's Joker Phillips on a warm day down here in Gainesville. Back in a moment. This is Gator Country. 
not hard to figure that out when you get off the airplane. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium opened in 1930. It's been renovated over the years. A massive structure. One of the great environments in all of football. Well, they need consistency out of Owens like he had on the last drive. And it was three or four for 28 yards. Seven of 16 in the first half for just 68 yards. Quick hitter to the far side. Here's Reedy. It's a couple of nice blocks to get close to that first down. Cody Riggs will get credit for pushing him out of bounds. A gain of nine on the play. You're looking at a young man that had 88 catches last year for over 1,000 yards. All Mac performer at three different positions. Wide receiver, kick returner, and punt returner. Owens throws to the far side. That pass is caught this time. It's Alonzo Russell, the young man who had 56 grabs a year ago. Yeah, and now you're getting it to your playmakers. Now you're challenging Florida's defense. They really hadn't brought a whole lot of heat on Terrence Owens, so this attack down the field a little bit. You've got to at least try it to know that you can't do it. Incomplete. Looking for Dwight Macon, the junior. Defended by Brian Poole. You see him there going in the hurry up mode. They are trying to push the tempo. Owens threw for a career high 401 yards last year against Eastern Michigan. This is Owens' show this year. He's been splitting time the last few years at Toledo, but it's all Terrence Owens. On second down, they run the football and pick up a couple of yards. So now you're going to look at a third down and let's call it eight. Michael Taylor picks up that tackle along with Neron Ball. Called his name a lot. He had a great camp, Ball. And coaches just felt like he was ready to take off this year. Good looking athlete. From Jackson, Georgia, Jackson High School, 6'3, 235 pounds. Toledo 0 for 7 on third down conversions this afternoon. They're looking at a third down and eight here. Pressure comes. Pass over the middle. I think it's short hops. It'll be incomplete. Right into the belly of Cody Riggs. And it's a punting situation as the Rockets switch out units. Just got to stand in there and knowing that you're going to take one. Every once in a while, those situations happen for a quarterback where you got to stand in there to complete one. Don't rush it. Knowing that you're going to get hit, that's part of playing the position. Pins his punt. Taken by Roberson. Roberson out over the 40 to the 43-yard line. A 44-yard punt and a 16-yard return. Gators have the football. Good field position. 6.37 to go in the third. Gators up by 11. I think they're going to have a quarterback change or something. Yeah. I'm not quite sure, but that's what I heard. Something like that. Johnny Manziel having to watch that first half for the Aggies in College Station. Looks like he'll come in with a 14-point lead. Here, the Gators lead by 11. Jeff Driscoll trying to make some guys miss. A nice little high step, and he'll take it into Toledo territory, give him an 11-yard pickup. The Gators here in the second half haven't uh, done much offensively, Andre. Yeah, three and out on consecutive drives, and to a good start here. They get to finally pick up a first down. But I'd like to see him challenge down the field. I mean, I think they can run the football with Mac Brown. You talked all offseason about trying to establish a more a vertical passing game. You've got the weapons to do it. You know, it, it takes it takes players. They have players, but then you have you, you got to pull the trigger and try to do it. The play fake to Brown. Trying to go down the field. This time they have Sullivan Patton who just can't hang on. The senior out of Mobile, Alabama, should Maybe have hauled that one in. Maybe that's why yeah. they don't go down the field. I don't know why he thought he had to jump. 
I mean, that, that right there is why he missed the football. Let's watch. He's wide open. All you have to do is run through a nice crossing route, wide open. That ball's not thrown high. Why would you jump? He's got to look it in. Turned away just a little bit too early. But he's going to catch that. He just runs through the ball without jumping. And now you got a chance to turn up the field and get in the end zone. Valdez showers back in the game. Stands alongside Driscoll. He'll get this handoff. Valdez to the 45. Gets a couple of yards. That'll bring up a third down. Ray Bush hit on that tackle. This guy was a corner last year. Played two games last year at that position. But he is a natural runner with the ball in his hands. 5'11", 190. Good change of pace back from Mac Brown, who's the bruiser. He's had an outstanding start to this season. So third down and eight. Empty set for the Gators. Pressure comes. Driscoll loses the football. Gators fall on it back at midfield. He and Silverman, left guard, will fall on it. J. Ron Elliott forces the fumble, the senior defensive end out of Cleveland, who led the team with six sacks a year ago, put the pressure on Driscoll. Yeah, he's going to come from the top of the screen right up here. And watch it. Just a nice low speed rush around the outside. It gets by D.J. Humphreys. And I like guys that have the presence in mind. Now forget just getting the sack. Get the ball out when you get there. So Christie will punt it away. Fair catch called for by Bernard Reedy at 29 yard punt and the Rockets defense looking pretty good here in the second half. Hey, Florida fans, be sure to get your tickets down to one of the premier men's college basketball doubleheaders, the Jimmy V Classic. The 19th annual event features your preseason top 10 Florida Gators taking on 13th ranked Memphis. Book your trip to New York City and cheer on the Gators. For tickets and information, visit JimmyVClassic.com or call 866-858-0008 and do it today. 4.26 to go in the third quarter. Plenty of time. Only scoring this quarter comes from Toledo as a field goal. And you know Toledo's capable of putting some drives together. But can they do it? That is the question. I mean, the, the weapons are there. Russell, 56 catches a year ago. Owens, a 64% passer for his career. Reedy, we know he can do it. Fluellen, plenty of weapons. Oh, what a tackle. Flew well and tripped up by Dominic Easley. A loss of three on the play. Dominic 6'2", 285, the senior out of Staten Island, New York. Felt like he was playing out of position last year. They tried to move him out to defensive end, and this year they move him back inside the tackle, and that's his natural home. Boy, he's on a lot of national award watch list for linemen. Owens throws picked off by the true freshman Vernon Hargraves Hargraves down inside the 25 the young man that was a national defensive player of the year picks off his first pass as a member of the Gators. And right over to Travaris Robinson the defensive backs coach and just watch him jump this played it extremely well down here. And he just lets the, the receiver get inside right there. And then now just jump it right underneath it. Excellent hands. A smart thing, get down at the end of it. Well, that is well played. Fighting a big physical receiver. He gets inside, and then you're in trail technique. And you start reading the quarterback who's trying to come there. Well, that is well played. His father, a defensive end coach at USF down the road, over 50 offers for Vernon. Here's Mac Brown. Boy, he has stood up in the hole. For more on Vernon, let's go downstairs, visit with Kara. 
Guys, Will Muschamp told us that the coaching staff absolutely loves Hargraves. They love his work ethic, his discipline. You brought up that he's a coach's son, but Muschamp said he just has a blue-collar mentality that will fit right in, and it's certainly working for him today. Yeah, he brings his lunch pail to practice every day. He is ready to work when he shows up, and I think it has a lot to do with being a coach's son, a disciplined player who comes in, studies the game, the gym rat type. Second down for Florida. Risk of the throw. Comes near side with it. Broken tackle inside the 15 and run out of bounds close to the 10 yard line. A gain of 12. And Trent Voss missed the tackle, the big fullback. Right here out in the flats and just break a tackle, get right back up the field. His presence in mind and know where you are along that sideline. Jog beat. Nine, nine missed tackles today for this Toledo defense. Jog the former linebacker, now in at fullback out of the I formation. Here's Mac Brown, breaks a tackle and he is swarmed by the Rockets up front. That'll be a loss of a yard. It's second and goal from the 11 now. Oh, and if you're Toledo, you got to have a stop here. You got to have, you got to force a field goal and not allow Florida into the end zone. That's a small win because there's still the entire fourth quarter to get an offense jump started that we know is capable of scoring points. Joyer, the fullback, who takes it inside the five, down to the four. But now you're looking at third and goal. A nice block by Clay Burton, who's known as one of those blocking type tight ends. Watch number 88 right there on the edge. And it just it doesn't have to be a knockout block, but it's a good position block that allows Joyer to get the edge and get himself up the field. Joyer only had a couple of rushes last year. Two rushes for one yard. Picks up three on that carry. Toledo's going to take a timeout here on third and goal from the four. And Campbell knows this is a big opportunity for his defense with one minute to go in the third quarter. Texas A&M had their hands full early with Rice for an update. Let's go visit with Dari once again. Dari. Guys, how about this play? Now, a and had scored three straight touchdowns at a 28-14 lead. Rice deep in their territory. Taylor McCard pass tipped in the air and caught by Jordan Taylor. Touchdown Owls, 28-21. They had a chance at a 45-yard field goal to end the half. Missed it. That's the deficit. Johnny Manziel likely to start the second half, guys. Rice won't go away. We talked about the experience on that team of 19 starters coming back, and they are right in it going into halftime. 28-21. They went to a bowl game last year. Good one right here. 17-6 with the Gators knocking on the door. Toledo lost to Utah State in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, 41-15. The play action wide open touchdown Florida getting it a jog beat with the touchdown reception from four yards out. Yeah, jog beats open because of the routes by the outside receivers. Almost a natural pick. Almost a natural pick to get him open. He comes out underneath the two outside receivers that went inside coverage, followed them in, and he found himself just out there all alone. Well, they have used the fullbacks of Jogby, Joyer. Both guys have been in the mix today. Point after up and good from Austin Harden. Gators lead now at 24 to 6, less than a minute to go here in the third quarter. Watch the two, watch the outside receivers here. Both will go inside, and that's going to allow the fullback right there out by himself. Watch Burton and Dunbar go inside to cover. 
coverage goes inside with him and that just allows him the dog beat outside to him all by himself. Nice job there to secure the catch put the ball away and stride on into the end zone. Time out to take a look at today's SEC Scholar athletes. Zach Karen for Toledo 3.6 GPA in civil engineering and Mike McNeely wide receiver. What's he doing? He must have made a B somewhere. Wow. Maybe Big Zach could, you know, straighten out some of these these roads, you know, around places we travel with civil engineering degree. I don't understand some of it. Going the same directions in certain <laughs> places. I think it might just be you. Oh, oh no, no, no. I don't know what goes into that. Uh, tell you what. Zach Karen's a guy that's going to get a lot of recognition throughout the year for this Toledo team up front. The big 6'5, 300 pound senior center. Uh, yeah, he's a, he Ohio. is a good one. We'll come back on the field here. If Toledo can hold on to the football as Justin Harden kicks it away. That'll settle down at the six. Reedy. Reedy had three kickoff returns and a punt return for a touchdown last year. Four total return touchdowns, only 16 yards on that return. You're talking about a player that was all conference at three positions. A wide receiver, where he caught 88 balls for over 1,100 yards. He was a kick returner and punt returner at the conference. Today's first and 10 line brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. So Owens back in the game. He is 13 out of 26, 120 yards. That pass is batted away by Cody Riggs. He was looking for Russell. Pass maybe a step behind Russell. Well, they are confident with him in the slot. He played corner last year, moved to safety this season. You can get him down in the slot covering receivers. That's a natural thing for him to do. He's got excellent cover skills. I gotta tell you, Owens just a little bit off his yeah. game. This is a guy two years ago that set the MAC record, completing 72% of his passes, and for his career, he's a 64% passer. And it just doesn't seem like he is quite in sync today. And even in just hitch routes, which are easy gimmies, you get off coverage. You got to be able to hit those, and, and they've been a little bit high all game long. Toledo is yet to convert a third down. They are 0 for 9. And that was one of their keys coming into this game. Limit the turnover, score in the red zone, and we had to convert on third down, and they haven't done it once today. Until now. Big hit from Marcus Roberson on Bernard Reedy, but Reedy holds on, moves the chains. The first conversion of the day against a, a defense that was 10th in the country in holding opponents on third down. Just looking for anything to jumpstart an offense. 22 seconds left here in the first half. Plenty of time. Incomplete. Out of bounds is Alonzo Russell. So 14 seconds to go in the third quarter. Everything seems to be just high coming from Owens. As a quarterback, I mean, is that a guy that's rushing it maybe? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. He's actually feeling rushed when it's not there. Here's Reedy. What a nice tackle by Riggs. Cody Riggs with another big play. The junior safety missed the last 11 games last year with an injury, and he's glad to be back on the field. The Gators glad to have him. And yeah, fractured his foot. Shelved him for the rest of the season. Well, that'll do it for the third quarter. 
Gators out in front, 24 to six. The final 15 minutes from the Swamp on the other side. Champs Gators lead 24 to 6 in their opener of 2013, trying to match last year's 11 win season. Right now they've got Toledo on the ropes. Third down and 10 coming up for the Rockets. Start of the fourth quarter. Owens will throw it down the middle, right through the hands of Reedy. A tough catch out in front and it's low, but it's one you gotta have on third downs. Third and ten, you gotta hit this one. The offensive line gives him great protection. No power comes late, but that's one you gotta have. Just the pressure here. Just a little more air under that football. And Reedy catches it. And then it gets interesting. Senior punter Vince Penza will kick it away. That's a good spiral taking Roberson down to the 15 yard line. Roberson with some running room. A 49 yard punt. Return 35 yards the other way. Penza makes the tackle for the Rockets, but Roberson sets up his Gator offense with a short field. I'll tell you what, excellent field position provided there by Barb Roberson. He returned two punts a year ago, but he averaged about 40 and a half yards on those two punts. <laughs> <laughs> Picks up 35 on that one. Once again, no Luchas Purifoy, who would have been a return man in certain situations for this Florida team, but he has been suspended for this opener. So Driscoll will line up under center with a couple of tight ends. Mac Brown is your running back. Just a straight power game, and Brown has stood up at the 46-yard line, giving him a couple of yards. Mac Brown now 22 carries, 105 yards. Boy, that Chase Murdoch's tough. He met met him right in the hole, and that's his eighth tackle of the game. He started off, I think he made the first three tackles for this Toledo defense, and he's been special ever since. And last year was just a special teams player. Well, the Rockets have kept Brown in check here in the second half. He had 97 yards in the first half. He has six carries for eight yards here in the second half. They'll fake it to Brown. Driscoll over the middle, wide open as Burton. Makes the catch. He's down to the 20. Oh, what a grab. 26 yard pickup. You got to respect the run and the way they ran it in the first half with Mac Brown. So the play action holds the linebackers just long enough for Burton to find the soft spot between the safeties and the linebackers. And look at this touch right over the top. And you had to allow a receiver to climb the ladder and make a play for you. That's. That's throwing it right there. 14 of 18, 153 yards at a touchdown for Driscoll. Burton has four of those receptions. Little end around toss to Patton. He's to the 10. Solomon will get into the end zone, but there will be a flag inside the five and that'll probably be coming back a well designed play had me fooled I thought it, everything was going right and Driscoll was running the option right Patton circles back holding on the offense number one the 10 yard penalty spot of the foul Repeat first down and it's Dunbar on the outside look at it, look at this one the option a little toss but it's Back out underneath or around the backside to Patton, and there's there's the hole, right there. Excellent call by the officials. So it's a spot foul. They'll back it up to the 13-yard line. He doesn't like that one. Well, not much he can do about it now.
So it'll be second down and three. Or excuse me, first down and three. He'll swing it out. To Burton on the far side. Oh, Did he fall forward there. for the first yeah. down? Well, I'm telling you, this guy's a special player. They got the block by Dunbar. And he's he's the guy that got flagged for the hole, but realizes that he's about to commit the, another penalty and allows him to let he lets him go. But then Burton dodging, ducking, and finally picking up the first down. Well, now it's first and goal from the 10-yard line. Mac Brown stutter steps, cuts it back inside the five, down to the two-yard line. And another flag. Holding on the offense, number 25, 10-yard penalty, repeat, second down. That's on Ajagbe, the fullback. He's a converted linebacker who moved over the over to fullback this spring. And I tell you what, they got to be happy with with his production and the way he's he's played. It's about the only blemish on his resume for today. He well, has been a workhorse. The Gators desperately trying to work on that penalty issue. Eight today. Last year, this club was penalized 105 times. They were last in the league, 115th in the country out of 120 teams in that department. Driscoll batted in the air, almost picked off by the big fella, Alan Covington. Trayvon Hester tapped it in the air, and Covington tried to chase it down. That's some pretty good instincts for a big fella, Covington. He played six games as a true freshman last year. One big guy gets his paw on it, and Covington just almost had him an interception. So now it's third and goal as the Gators go the wrong way. It's sitting at the 18. Driscoll will just keep it, and he is dropped after a yard. Drayvon Hester, good series for Hester. The freshman out of Pittsburgh. The coaches describe him as just having a great motor. Yeah, that would play to play to the whistle. So now it's third and goal. Good defense from the Rockets. The coaches jump off the bench in a hurry. Marquise Moore, the true freshman out of Toledo, Ohio, will get credit for the tackle behind the line. Yeah, it was well read by, by Moore. He's a pretty good athlete as well. State wrestling champ, or was runner-up at the state wrestling championship. He played in the state championship football game himself his senior year. So Austin Harden, the redshirt freshman, already with one field goal today. This one from 39. He made from 24 earlier. And it's no good. And Matt Campbell and company happy with that effort from the defensive side of the ball. Now their offense to take the field. Not a lot of time left in this one. They'll need to pick it up. 24-6 Gators. Back at the swamp on a hot afternoon. Tell you what, some late news last night. Suspensions for the Florida Gators. Will Muschamp. We knew Antonio Morrison was going to miss this. He got in some trouble in the summer with the local police department. But you see Cummings, Pittman, Purefoy is the biggest name in that group. Not on the field for this defense. The lockdown corner sitting this one out. Toledo needs some offense. They haven't produced much today against this stout Gator D. Owens going up top. Pass incomplete. He was looking 
For Alonzo Russell. They haven't missed Purifoy much. Roberson has been excellent in punt returns, good coverage. Jalen Watkins called his name a few times, and then Hargraves had the interception. So you talk about three guys that have stepped up their games in his absence. There's a little toss sweep that goes to Kareem Hunt. He loses a couple of yards. I'll tell you what, you know, the Gators lost a ton on defense last year. Only yeah. returned three starters. They changed coordinators. DJ Jerkin stays on the step to become the off of the defensive coordinator, his first coordinator job. And I got to tell you something, this defense, to me, doesn't look a step slower than anything we saw last year. No, they, they, uh, they can play sideline to sideline. You know that. They're going to be able to cover. They love to play man to man, get in your face, bring pressure. That hasn't changed about him. And then you add Ronald Powell, who I think is set to have a good year after the two knee surgeries. They're in a pretty good place. And there's going to be a timeout taken by Toledo. That'll be the second timeout by the Rockets. 9.31 to go in this one. Matt Campbell trying to figure out this Gator defense. Back in a moment. Fourth quarter football. Good look at the freshman Vernon Hargraves. He's playing quite a bit without Luches Pure for the lineup, and he's now part of our good hands play of the day. Brought to you by Allstate. His interception is first in a Gator jersey. Yeah, he missed some time in camp and with his shoulder, and came back this week. For true freshman, get yourself in the ball game and come up with an interception. That's nice. It was well played. Third down and 11 for the Rockets. Owens is flushed out of the pocket. He'll try to run for it. He gets to the 30. See where they spot that. He needed to get over the 32, right between the 32 and the 33, but I don't think he got there. I've been waiting on that all day from him. You know he's capable of doing it. And just waiting for him to pull it down, maybe even call some runs for him. He's so athletic just to mix things up a little bit. His helmet came off, but it's fourth down. The punt team comes out. He'd have to leave the game if they were going to go for it. The guy just rips your helmet off. Well, tighten it up. That's why you got chin strap. The Rockets will back it up five yards. Boy, I think the Gators may be whistled for too many men on the field. They were trying to change out units. Guys running off the field, guys running on the field. That is not going to make Coach Muschamp happy. You know, it's fourth down. You know what special teams unit is due on the field. And it won't give Toledo a first down, though. You know, those are the things. Legal substitution on the defense. Five yards in the previous spot. Replay fourth down. You hear Will Muschamp in the background there saying the ball wasn't even marked. Yeah, it looks like it's marked there. there. Clearly. 16, yeah, 16, 17 guys still running around out there. Those were the things he was talking about to care on the way in at halftime that the little things they need to clean that up. Something like that in a ball game later in the year. And it cost you. They won and now Owens comes in the game. They're going to go for it on fourth and one and Florida will use a timeout to get settled down a little bit. 
So we'll let Will Muschamp talk things over. Probably don't want to be involved in that conversation. We'll step aside. What was that? Rockets will keep their offense on the field on a fourth down and one from the 31 yard line. It's kind of interesting because they've run the, run the ball six times for only eight yards today. Flag down to line of scrimmage. They'll have the first down on the quick throw. Alonzo Russell. Six carries, eight yards in the second half. Well, they may have gotten Dominic Easley to jump again. Trying to time that snap count. Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty. Result in a first down. And you watch Zach Karen. Talk about some experience. Watch it, it, I don't know if you can see his left arm, but all day long he's been doing that. And if I'm easily, I go to the official and I tell him that's the, because that's he cannot do that. He cannot simulate a snap with that left arm. And he's gotten easily on it a couple of times. And maybe even Jacobs once as well. Ten penalties, 70 yards against the Gators. It's a first down and ten for the Rockets. 8.20 to play in this one. Only a couple of field goals for Toledo offensively. Owens looking for Reedy gets popped. They will say incomplete out of bounds. Must champs. Must champs still working the official. And that's a small window right there. Nice jump by Gorman, the safety, to help out Roberson to condense the window. Because they're trying to hit it right between the safety and the corner. When you have a safety with range, that makes it a tough throw for the quarterback. Reedy has six catches, but only 31 yards today. Had 88 grabs a year ago. Here's Reedy. He's got some running room. He kicks it to the outside and. He is dropped at the Gator 44 yard line. That's a 20 yard pickup. Gorman trips him up by the shoelaces. Boy, what a block by Russell on the outside on Jalen Watkins. Just sent him head over heels. Owens throws. That is incomplete. He was looking for Justin Olak. Roberson on that coverage. And that's what you got to have. If you're going to work the edges with that quick passing game, and it's almost an extended handoff out in space, but you better have receivers that can make blocks for you to turn up the field. And he got one then from uh, Alonzo Russell. down in the middle of that line and looking for Fluellen. It's incomplete. Boy, just a little bit high all day. Well, you can tell guys probably getting a little bit tired out there. We've seen a lot of penalty flags here in the last 10 minutes. And that heat starts working on you. Personal foul. Tripping on the offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. Right in here. Oh, yeah. The old leg whip. Robert Lazowski, a junior. He played in 10 games, so he's an experienced player last year. So it's second down and 25 now. Toledo wants their final timeout. Final timeout, Toledo. Had just a frustrating day offensively for Matt Campbell's Toledo team. It really yeah. is. I mean, every time they've tried to challenge down the field, the ball's been a little bit high. And I think Florida's played the short stuff well enough. 
tackling well in space when you have when you, you have to when you play a team like Toledo offensively. Well the most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home. The SEC Network launching in August of 2014. For more information go to GetSECNetwork.com. Less than a year away the SEC Network be on display for all three football games every Saturday so second down and 25 no more timeouts for the Rockets no one's today is 16 out of 36 for a buck 52 sets up a little screen that goes to Kareem Hunt, Leon Orr read it well and played it well. Big fella getting out. And that was something that DJ Durkin talked about. One of his keys to the game is they're going to have to handle the screen game of Toledo. We haven't seen a whole lot of it. Well, no, we haven't. And a lot of it's just kind of been blown up, or you get the bubble screens where you're trying to hit somebody quick. And Florida's done a nice job of rallying up, making tackles, and open in the open field. When we get big guys like that. They can run down receivers. Yeah. Well, we'll ask <laughs> it's DJ. almost impossible to move the ball. I'll we'll ask him to describe your defense and without missing a beat just said we're athletic across the board. I think we saw that Leon Orr. Owens passes incomplete should have been picked off. Roberson hit him right in the chest. Play there by Michael Taylor with the pressure. There's Coach Durkin. It's called a good game today. We'll be proud of the effort by the Gators. Will sail out of bounds with 6:51 to 6:50 and 6:49. To about yeah. it, when you get in the conference play, you're going to get some teams that are sitting on the routes of the Gators because they're not challenging down the field much, and they can play man to man and just sit inside to stop the run. And they're going to. There'll be some times if they don't get this fixed and worked out fast that uh, they're going to have some problems. It's been efficient by Jeff Driscoll, but there's no threat to loosen the defense up. You know, Andre DeBose goes down with an ACL, and that was a devastating blow. He was yeah. set for a just a, one of those big play type receivers. It was gonna, you just had a feeling it was going to be a great year for Andre. I think they have the weapons. I think they just have to do it. Handoff goes to Herndon. Today's first and ten line is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. One time they did go down the field. Patton put it on the ground. Yeah. And then that kind of discourages you from trying to do it again. Florida just trying to. Let this clock move. But better defensive teams are going to have some pressure. They're going to be stronger and bigger inside, so you won't be able to push them around. And they'll sit on routes because you're not throwing passes 10, 12, 15 yards down the field. Oh, nice stutter oh, step nice. by Herndon. He'll have the first down out over the 35 to the 38 yard line, a 17 yard pickup. Explosive run there, and that's just kind of missing from this Florida offense. The explosive plays, plays 15 yards or more, and right here. Nice blocks up front. Silberman pulling around the guard to get out in front and open things up for Mark Herndon. Florida's rushed it for 205 yards today on 41 carries. They will continue to keep it on the ground. 
Four and a half minutes to go in this one. Gain of six. So Herndon getting quite a bit of work today. Former walk-on who earned a scholarship. Coach Muschamp in front of the team awarded him with a scholarship for his work just a couple of weeks ago. Get to eat the training table now. <laughs> That's good stuff when guys come in as walk-ons and they earn, earn their way. Driscoll trying to move the pocket. Pass is caught by Tevin Westbrook, the tight end. First time we've gone to a tight end today at the Gators offensively. Driscoll now 17 out of 22 on the afternoon. Stop there by Trent Boss. He's been active as well. Eight tackles. Those linebackers for Toledo. Both he and Murdoch played a lot. Silvestri with six tackles of his own the other the third linebacker third down and four Herndon has the first down and almost had a touchdown gain of nine tripped up at the last moment or he was taking it to the house. I'll tell you that, that that's something special to watch that type of run. Watch him make the first defender miss. Just freezes it right there. Boom. Give it, take it away, and then he explodes through the hole. And if, if it's not for somebody grabbing him around the ankle, it is bye-bye, see you later. BMW drive of the game and for that we'll go back to the second quarter Gators went 10 plays 83 yards and it was their second six minute touchdown drive. Yeah they did a nice job mixing run and pass and you see here Mac Brown just holding over people determined to get himself into the end zone to finish the drive. Tyler Murphy will check into the game. That quarterback, and he will hand it off. And Kelvin Taylor, number 21, the freshman out of Bell Glade, Florida. The true freshman picks up 27. Couple of good runs for Kelvin. Let's hear a nice hold. The offensive line washes everything down inside. And I think now you're dealing with a exhausted Toledo defense. Taylor inside the 10. Play of this drive coming up. Taylor down to the seven yard line. So, Andre, this Florida team head to South Florida next week. They'll get some bodies back and take on the Hurricanes, who won their opener last night. Interesting matchup down in South Florida. It will be. Tell you what, it, it, I think the schedule's going to get tougher as they go. Billy Taggart now the head coach down at South Florida. He is a good football coach. The 
Well, Mac Brown exhibited the right stuff today, and he is our player of the game. Brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low prices every day. Mac was going to get a lot of work today with Matt Jones still out with a viral infection, but Matt will be back next week. But 112 yards on the ground for Mr. Brown. He went 25 carries. That's that's doing it. That's a workman's game right there. Proved he could carry the load, and they gave him a shot at it. Well, that'll do it. Gators win it 24 to 6. Solid defensive effort by Will Muschamp's troops as they hold the Rockets to just two field goals on the afternoon. Toledo will head off to Missouri, face their second consecutive SEC opponent. The Gators will head down to Miami. We'll come back, put a wrap on it. Stay with us.